Sacagawea, a name that resonates with courage and adventure, is a symbol of resilience in American history. A legendary figure in the famous Lewis and Clark expedition, her contributions helped the Lewis and Clark expedition achieve its mission goals by exploring the Louisiana Territory. In this video, we walk through history, unraveling the mysteries of a fascinating story of Sacagawea, the legendary woman who led Lewis and Clark, discovering the truth about her death. Remember to hit the like button because it helps us a lot. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the notification bell to not miss the upcoming interesting videos. Sacagawea embarked on an extraordinary journey with the Lewis and Clark expedition, traversing thousands of miles from North Dakota to the Pacific Ocean. That journey played an important role in establishing cultural bridges with Native American communities and fostering the expedition's exchange of ideas on natural history. In the early 20th century, the National Association of American Women's Suffrage recognized Sacagawea as a symbol of women's values and independence. To honor her remarkable achievements, many statues and plaques have been erected, thereby preserving her legendary story for future generations. Sacagawea was born in 1788 as a member of the Akadika tribe, also known as Limi Shoshone. She was the daughter of a Shoshone chieftain, her birthplace near present-day Salmon, Idaho, right next to Idaho-Montana border. In 1800, when she was about 12 years old, she was kidnapped after a battle with the Hidatsa Indians, resulting in the deaths of four Shoshone warriors and several women and children. She was incarcerated in the Hidatsa village near present-day Washburn, North Dakota. Sometime later, Sacagawea was sold to Tuisson Charbonneau, a Quebecois trapper. He also bought another young Shoshone girl called Otter Woman as his wife. Charbonneau is said to have brought both girls from Hidatsa or Juan Sacagawea in a game of chance. In the winter of 1804, Lewis and Clark's expedition set up their camp near the many villages of Hidatsa in North Dakota, where they began construction of Fort Mandan. Realizing the importance of finding trusted guides and interpreters, they sought the assistance of various trappers in the area. Then they ran into Charbonneau and discovered that his wife could speak Shoshone. The expedition quickly hired Charbonneau as an interpreter. While stationed at Fort Mandan, Sacagawea, Charbonneau's wife, was pregnant. Her presence was warmly welcomed by the expedition as her linguistic abilities would prove indispensable. William Clark, one of the leaders of the expedition, specifically wrote in his diary that a woman with a party of men is a token of peace. In February 1805, shortly after joining the expedition, Sacagawea gave birth to her first child, a son named John Baptiste Charbonneau. Affectionately nicknamed Pompey by Clark, the infant was carried on his back by Sacagawea as the Legion of Discovery embarked on a journey up the Missouri River in April 1805. The following month, Sacagawea bravely rescued items dropped from a capsized boat, including Lewis and Clark's diaries and files. The Legion commanders, who praised her act, named the Sacagawea River in her honor on the 20th of May, 1805. Upon reaching Idaho, the expedition quickly sought the help of the Shoshone people in order to obtain horses to support their journey across the treacherous mountains. In this moment, Sacagawea plays an important role. Recognizing familiar landmarks, she guided the expedition to her fellow Shoshones, reuniting with them on August 1805. Her translation skills facilitated communication between the expedition and the people of Shoshone. To Sacagawea's surprise, she discovers that her brother, Kamahewite, now leads a Shoshone tribe, taking over the leadership role after her, their father's death. The reunion made the journey of the expedition a lot easier and obtained the precious horses that they were in dire need of. 
After that, Sacagawea and the expedition will continue their journey to the Pacific Ocean. In 1806, when the expedition began its journey back east, Sacagawea proved to be an indispensable guide. Clark, realizing she could accurately memorize trails from childhood, called her his most trusted guide. Among the trails she recalled was one that would later become known as Bozeman Pass in Montana. In August 1806, the expedition returned to the village of Hidatsa Mandan, where Charbonneau and Sacagawea parted ways with Lewis and Clark. They will spend the next three years living among the Hidatsa. In recognition of Charbonneau's contributions, he was paid $500 and granted 320 acres of land for his efforts. In 1809, at the invitation of William Clark, Charbonneau, Sacagawea, and their son, Jean Baptiste, went to St. Louis, Missouri. Clark was very fond of young Jean Baptiste and hoped to persuade Charbonneau to settle in the city. However, Charbonneau and Sacagawea soon left St. Louis, leaving their son in Clark's care. Jean Baptiste was then enrolled in boarding school at St. Louis. Around 1811, Sacagawea gave birth to a daughter named Lizette. According to historical records, Sacagawea died in 1812 of an illness of unknown cause. A diary entry from 1811 by Henry Brackenridge, a fur trader at the Fort Lisa trading post on the Missouri River, wrote that Sacagawea and Charbonneau were living at the fort. Brackenridge records that Sacagawea became ill and longed to return to her homeland. Further evidence came from John Luddig, a secretary at Fort Lisa, who recorded in his diary on December 20, 1812, that Charbonneau's wife had died of putrefaction. He said that she was about 25 years old, leaving behind a beautiful newborn baby girl. In February 1813, a few months after Luddig's diary entry, the fort fell victim to a hostile Native American attack, resulting in the deaths of 15 men. Notably, Sacagawea and Luddig's young daughter survived this attack. However, oral traditions of the East Shoshone say that Sacagawea rejoined the Shoshone in 1871 in their Wind River Reserve in Wyoming. She left her husband, Charbonneau, crossed the Great Plains and married a man of the Comanche tribe. She continued to live there until her death in 1884 and was buried in what is now known as Sacagawea Cemetery near Fort Washaki, Wyoming. In August 1813, it was reported that William Clark had legally adopted both of Sacagawea's children, Jean Baptiste and Lisette. Jean Baptiste Charbonneau embarks on a life full of thrilling adventures. The journey extended to Europe and then became a guide, along with such notables as John Fremont and his fellow mountain countrymen. Sadly, he died in 1866 at the age of 61 while on his way to a gold mine in Montana, near Danner, Oregon. As for Lizette, it is not believed that she survived her childhood as there are no records of her later in Clark's papers. Meanwhile, Toussaint Charbonneau continued the life of a mountain man, working at the American Fur Company. In 1833, he joined Prince Maximilian's expedition, embarking on a remarkable journey. Over the years, Toussaint had at least five different Indian wives. He eventually died at Mandan Fort in 1843. Please like and share if you find the video content interesting and useful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and comment below so as not to miss the upcoming interesting videos. Thanks for watching.